We tend to forget that many EMT students just starting out are coming in with zero medical knowledge, and that's okay. In this video, I'm gonna be going over basic anatomy and physiology of the heart right from the very beginning. This is going to be a very simplified version so you can get a foundation. So when you do learn the more in-depth material, you'll have an easier time getting a grasp on it in class. Get each section down before you move on to the next. Feel free to rewind or pause as much as you need to. Just get it down. So the function of the heart is simply to move or pump blood wherever it needs to go in the body. And you think of it like as if your basement flooded, you put a pump in there, it's gonna suck the water in and then pump it out to wherever it needs to go, which is not right there. So there are three types of muscle in the body. There's skeletal, smooth, and cardiac. And as the name would suggest, the heart is made up of cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle is involuntary. It means you don't have to think about it for it to move. So you don't consciously make your heart beat. Your heart beats on its own, thanks to being cardiac muscle or involuntary muscle. And thank goodness cardiac muscle is involuntary, because if you had to think about it, when you fell asleep, you would die. Now I know you know your right from your left. If you've made it this far and you got into EMT class, I am positive you know your right from your left. But what I have seen is that people make quick decisions and actually make mistakes on what part of the heart is the right side and the left side. Whenever you see a diagram of the heart, it's always in the perspective as if the person is standing right in front of you. So that would mean this is the right side and this is the left side. All right, so instead of looking at the heart like the shape of a heart, let's look at it in the shape of a box. And the heart has four chambers, so we'll divide this into four sections. The top two sections right here are the atria. The bottom two are ventricles. So you have the right atrium, the left atrium, the right ventricle, and the left ventricle. And how do we remember the atria are on top and the ventricles are on the bottom? Well, if you take the A and the V and you just put them together, they create a diamond. So this diamond will tell you the atria are on top, the ventricles are on the bottom. If you try to switch them, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna be a diamond. So real quick, I wanna define oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Oxygenated blood means that it has plenty of oxygen in it. It is oxygen rich. Deoxygenated blood means that it lacks oxygen. So back in school, a lot of times people think that arteries are red and veins are blue. I want you to get rid of that thought right now. It doesn't help you and it's not true. So we're gonna define what is an artery and what is a vein. So if it's not whether it's red or blue, whether it's oxygenated or deoxygenated, really all it means is whether it's going to or from the heart. So if you have a blood vessel where the blood is moving away from the heart, that is an artery. Now, if you have a blood vessel where the blood is going to the heart, that is a vein. All right, so let's talk about blood flow. Now, a tip here is that the blood always goes into the heart, into the atria. Hey, man, come on hey, in! On? And always leaves the heart through the ventricle. You are out of here! Oh. So that's a little tip for you right there. Now let's go back to our square diagram of the heart. So blood is going to come in to the right atria, then it's gonna pass down into the right ventricle, 
and then it's going to get pumped out of the heart. Then blood's going to come back to the heart through the left atria, pass down into the left ventricle, and then back out. I actually made these red and blue so you can kind of get an idea. The blue doesn't mean veins or arteries, but it means oxygenated and deoxygenated. So the blue is the deoxygenated blood and the red is the oxygenated blood. So now, where is this coming and going from? Let's start here. So the deoxygenated blood comes into the heart. And where's that coming from? The rest of the body. The rest of the body used up all its oxygen and now it's traveling back to the heart. So now once it leaves the heart, it's leaving, it's, de it's still deoxygenated, it still doesn't have oxygen. So where are we gonna go? To the lungs. It's gonna go to the lungs to get oxygenated again. When we come back over here, where's, where's that blood coming from? And now it's oxygenated? You're right. It's coming from the lungs. And now it goes into the atria, down to the ventricle, ventricle pumps that out. And where do you think it's gonna go? To the rest of the body where it needs to go. So if you could remember this diagram as is, we got a body up here, a lung down here, a lung here, and a body there. And you can remember the red and blue arrows traveling like that. Almost kind of looks like a basketball. This is the pathway that the blood will take. So the next thing I want to go over are valves. We have four valves in our heart, and they are very important. What the valves do is they prevent backflow of blood into the system. So if this was a valve, it might have two or three flaps, right? The blood will flow. When the heart beats again, it creates pressure and will close, not allowing the blood to flow back. But because of the pressure, the blood's got to go somewhere so it will go out the proper direction. So as I said, valves are very important. Without valves, the blood would just go. <laughs> All right, so what are the valves? We said there were four valves. And on this chart, I'm going to label them here, 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 and here. Now, in real life, as you're going to see later, they're not actually at the base of the ventricles. So what are these valves? So this valve is the tricuspid valve. This valve is the pulmonary valve. This one is the aortic valve. And this one is the mitral valve. Quick little heads up, little extra tip. Anytime you see pulmonary, you know it has to do with the lungs. So if we remember, where was the right ventricle pumping to? The lungs. That's the pulmonary valve. So anytime you hear pulmonary, think lung. Now, the aortic valve, when you get into the circulatory system, the left ventricle sends blood into the aorta, hence the aortic valve. Now, how do we remember this? So we could remember it like this. Take the first letter of each of the valve. T, P, M, A. And if we put them together and create a mnemonic, we can say toilet paper my ass. It's a logical sign. <laughs> well, that was a close one. All right, so let's apply this to something you're going to see in class. So here we have a diagram of the heart. Whenever you see a picture or a diagram of a heart, you're always looking at it in the perspective of a person's heart who is standing in front of you, facing you. So that would mean that this is the right side and this is always the left side. So now locating the atria and the ventricles, this is the right atrium, this is the left atrium, this is the right ventricle, and this is the left ventricle. 
let's locate the four vowels. Now you'll notice in this diagram, they are not in the same location as I drew them in our picture. The purpose of the picture was to give you the idea that there are valves leaving each chamber. So now let's locate them on this diagram. Here we have the tricuspid valve. Here's the pulmonary valve. Here's the mitral valve. And here's the aortic valve. So now let's talk about the pathway of blood. We know that the blood is coming from the body and fill the right atrium. Now this blood is coming via the vena cava. So you'll notice that there are two arrows, one pointing down and one pointing up. The arrow pointing down is the superior vena cava, and the one pointing upwards is coming from the inferior vena cava. So the blood will fill the right atrium. From the right atrium, it will fill the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, it will go out to both lungs, and it's going to go out through the pulmonary arteries. So a couple things to remember, as we had discussed before, is that when you hear pulmonary, think lungs. And because the blood is going away from the heart, it is an artery, hence pulmonary arteries. Now the blood went to the lung, picked up its payload, it is now oxygen rich, and now it's coming back to the heart via the pulmonary veins. Remember pulmonary being lung and veins means that the blood is coming back to the heart. So the blood's coming back to the heart from the lungs, it's gonna fill the left atrium, then move down to the left ventricle, and from there, it's going to go out to the rest of the body. That's going to go out through the rest of the body through the aorta. As you can see, the air three arrows going up. That is the ascending aorta. And if you look to the bottom of the diagram, you see a single arrow going down. That is the descending aorta. So let's go through this really quick. From the body, fills the right atrium. From there, it fills the right ventricle, goes out to both lungs, comes back to the lungs, oxygen rich, into the left atrium. From the left atrium, it's going to go down to the left ventricle, and from the left ventricle, it's going to go out to the rest of the body. And that cycle will continue. When it does not, that is a bad thing. Now there's quite a bit I didn't cover, but if you're solid on this material, you will have a much easier time when you go over it in class. If you got anything out of this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any new videos that are coming out. Once again, thank you very much for being here and I look forward to seeing you at the next video.